Welcome back to uh, What the Flick, I'm Matt, that's Alonzo. Uh, Netflix all over the news as usual, uh, but this time because uh, people both in this country and in France uh, are saying that the things that they are making, the films, don't really count as films. Uh, Netflix has uh, recently been told by the artistic director at the Cannes Film Festival that their films will not be in competition. Sure, they can show them, but they're not gonna be eligible for any awards because they don't show in theaters. The only way to qualify is that they have to be in theaters in France. They have to be exhibited in a theater, uh, which I think is kind of lame. Yeah, I, and I, frankly, I don't know why Netflix doesn't just bite the bullet and do it. They do, for any movie they think has an Oscar shot, Right. They will open it for a week in Los Angeles at the IPIC and in New York, I imagine, somewhere. Uh, you know, the new Beverly has done some 35 millimeter runs of like, you know, War Machine and, and Meyerowitz stories and some other titles from them. So, yeah, I, it seems like if it's a matter of jumping through qualification hoops and just jump through the hoops because you know I'm sure they don't have a problem with Amazon movies being shown at Cannes and those are you know yes they do get a more traditional theatrical distribution but they wind up streaming and and Amazon has has taken the step of even not making stuff available on DVD like right. you know you can't get Todd Haynes's Wonderstruck you have to stream it on Amazon you can't own it physically whereas you know, Netflix is about to put out you know 13 Reasons Why on DVD. Yeah, it it's a it's a weird conundrum, I think, because on a certain level, what 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 the film festival is doing, uh, for, to your point, I get telling Netflix like, look, you guys got enough money, just four wall it. Yes, in, in just. You know, four walling it in, is in, basically in you win your own or theater. wherever it is you have to do it. Right. You know? For those who don't know, when you four wall something, that means you're basically paying to show it yourself. Yeah, you're renting the theater, renting you the keep theater. all the box office right. receipts. Um, I'm not, you know, off the top of my head, I don't know what the rules for the Cannes Film Festival are, are. I know that for the Academy, you have to show for a week or so in LA and New York and or get reviewed by the LA Times and the New York Times. I'm not sure if that part of it, that's part of it anymore because I think the LA, no, the LA Times and the New York Times are like, look, we can't review right. every dang movie that opens. Right. But I think that if you, as long as you have the theatrical run, you know, you're fine. Right now, I think what's problematic here and can I think is making up these rules as they go along. Probably frankly. so. <laughs> what I think is a little problematic though is that it seems like this refusal on the part of the film festival to understand how Netflix is coming in and buying these movies and distributing these movies that the studio simply won't pay for and they, right. and and won't buy. And so what are some of these filmmakers left to do? Yeah, who else and, was clamoring to make Oakja, you know? Right, exactly. I mean not that they nobody would have, but I mean they you know, Netflix stepped up, paid for it, made it happen. This is a movie that exists. We now have to sort of split the hairs of deciding is a movie still a movie if it only you know is available on your television screen and on the internet. You know, and it's like I mean, it used to be back in the day that like higher profile American TV movies played theatrically in Europe. Right. Spielberg's Duel was a theatrical release right. in Europe. You right. know, so right. this, the Battlestar Galactica pilot TV movie right. was played back in the eighties. That was they, played they slapped in sense around on it and put yeah. it in theaters. So it, 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 they're they're really much kind of splitting hairs at this point. And it's not like Netflix isn't making quality stuff. I mean, yes, they gave us Bright and you know Mute, but they also gave Gave us the Myrid stories and Oakjaw and you know a lot of really interesting film. You know Mudbound. Right. Uh, so I don't know why you punish them for not hewing to these sort of traditional um, distribution models. Well, so let's talk about the other part of the story where Spielberg weighs in uh, in a recent interview and says, "Yeah, Netflix movies shouldn't qualify for Oscars." And he's, I find this to be kind of disappointing on his part because he kind of calls out the idea of like look like if you're making something for a small screen like that's a TV movie and you know kind of going back to my earlier point I feel like you know he talks about how you know if you can't go through the the through the process of raising money to get your film financed and get it made at a studio, well then. Oh, and, that's, but that, no, that, that is so BS on so many no, levels. No, I understand that, but <laughs> but you know, let me find the quote tell, on here. Tell that to the people who got their movie greenlit by Annapurna. Well, you know, right. They didn't, have to, they didn't have to schlep around for two million people to get source money. You know, Megan Ellison wrote so, a check. So here's the quote. Uh, 
So more, he, fewer and fewer filmmakers are going to struggle to raise money or go to compete at Sundance. More of them are going to let the SVOD business finance their films, maybe with the promise of a slight one week theatrical window to qualify them for awards as a movie. But in fact, once you commit to a TV format, you're a TV movie. Uh, like, okay, again, Steven Spielberg. Dual. Well, <laughs> right, but also, okay, Steven Spielberg, say this from the position of somebody who's never had to struggle to get a film financed. Yes, right? since like, Jaws, right, let's right. say. Spielberg's, probably Spielberg's biggest problem that he's ever had financing a film is he doesn't get the money he wants. Yes. It's not like nobody will give him any money. Yeah, oh, right? I'm sorry, I had to get money from India to get whatever, right. like la-di-da. Right. Uh, yeah, it's, oh God, that is this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Right, so <laughs> what's irritating about that is like, come on, man. Like, And, and as far as the whole like, you know, creating it for the small screen, blah, 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 like, Hitchcock made Psycho with the crew from his TV show. Yeah, like he shot that movie lean and mean, as though he were creating it for television. It was very low budget by studio standards, and I'm sure people at the time were like, "Ooh, what's this going to be?" You know, so that has nothing to do with the final product. You can't tell me that Mudbound, you know, the way that Rachel Morrison shot that movie is designed to be seen this big. That is an epic. Ooh. That is a gorgeous movie. Right. Oakjaw is a big Big movie, right. whether you like it or not, you know. Uh, and uh, you know, Meyerowitz stories is is intricate and interesting and complex. So uh, the the idea that because they were made for Netflix and they got their money through Netflix and not from Amazon and not from Apple and not from whoever else is going to step up to this is garbage. Well, and I yeah, I mean, it, I also think again, this is a guy like Steven Spielberg completely ignoring the fact. That the business, the modern corporate driven he film business. He co owns business, a studio, right, let's not forget, right, by the, the way. Right, exactly. <laughs> like, come on, Spielberg, put your money where your mouth is and start funding these indie movies like crazy out of DreamWorks, these small films that you're saying, like, let's see that, yeah. right? Uh, which I don't think we're seeing. This is really, I think, kind of myopic on his part because. Thoroughly. And look, like I love him as a filmmaker, except for his most recent movies. <laughs> uh, I think he's a very, very good filmmaker, a, one of the more influential filmmakers still alive today. But this is a guy who's never had to struggle the way I think some other filmmakers have had to struggle, and I just think it's this complete wrong-headed way of looking at this. I mean, he is one of the last of the sort of studio system products. He came up right. through Universal TV, you know, he directed like Night Gallery episodes and other TV movies and then he did Duel and then he transitioned over and was doing like, you know, Sugarland Express and like he was at, he was on the Universal lot in one way or another for ages. And so he has no idea what it's like to go out and try and scrape together money as an indie filmmaker. He's never been an indie filmmaker. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. So, you know, and then we should talk about over the break, you were talking a little bit about Kodachrome, right? Which is well, the irony, I think, what he misses here is that there's a lot of films that Netflix will go to the festivals and buy that were already financed and made. They're exactly. not made with SVOD money. Of course. Yeah, no, I mean, the, uh, uh, Mudbound, among others, was an acquisition. Right. And <laughs> Kodachrome was an acquisition, the one we just talked about the trailer for. And the trailer tells you, you know, shot entirely on 35 millimeter Kodak film. It's like, well, that's nice, but if no one's Going to project it in 35 millimeter Kodak film. I'm not sure how much of a difference that makes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, yes, the Netflix model is not perfect, and I wish they leaned more into theatrical presentation the way that Amazon and other people do. But Spielberg, calm down.